think now we had a really uh, professional view on programming and I'm more representing the, uh, the amateur side and um, thanks for the invitation first um, I'm going to cover um, uh, the design paradigm of um, the Unix philosophy and how I relate to it. That's why I'm. Um, uh, we start by going back to the 70s, somewhere in, in New, Jersey, New Jersey, at the Bell Laboratories, and we started to to develop an operating system which uh, is Unix. And actually, what I find interesting that it's um, quite a long time for. Um, uh, when you think in computing time, so it's um, in 2013 they uh, celebrated their uh, 40 years uptime. It's like um, when you celebrate, you use Comic Sans. It's very clear. <laughs> and um, since I never really touched the uh, genuine Unix, we're talking more about what um, started with um, Richard Stallman and the uh, uh, GNU project. And so in 2007, I really got like my first introduction to, um, to GNU, GNU Linux. And um, I pretty early came really interested in a lot of principles that were behind this operating system and how they were approaching um, stuff. And that's like kind of the uh, Unix philosophy. Um, it's really not a, not a strict set of principles, but more um, more loose um, um, tenets or principles that can be applied. So. This is like uh, one collection of these principles, like small is beautiful, make each program do one thing well, build a prototype as soon as possible, choose portability over efficiency, store numerical data in flat ASCII files, use software leverage to your advantage, use shell scripts to increase leverage and portability, avoid captive user interfaces and make every program a filter. Um, these are the principles more in detail. I will skip through this pretty fast um, so we uh, can have um, a look at the, the application um, and what I kind of interpreted this, this set of rules. Um, so when I first got introduced to, to Linux, it was um, a big thing is that you tend to, you have to get along with the command line and the principles behind is that the simple uh, function of piping the output of one program into another I really found interesting because um, it was like a very simple way to have a user interface that lets you build your own application and um, really do like a tool chain that um, lets you achieve um, what you want also in a very um, uh, sometimes inefficient and unordinary way. It's not like um, there's one right way to do it. Um, prototyping is a learning process, very general uh, principle, but also interesting. Um, that's not so much, and that for me is really, um, it's, it's like the a fundament for a lot of works that um, um, I really look for um, for file formats um, that um, are human readable, that can be understand and that can be um, um, uh, manipulated and not only with the application that um, it's meant for, like um, for example in proprietary a software it would be like you um, have a Photoshop uh, file format that you should or mostly edit with Photoshop but you have more uh, 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 general um, file format that you can lose a lot of different tools to, to manipulate. Um, and that's also in a very important because I do mostly best scripting and um, it was interesting that it's not like a natural law that um, shell scripts are um, a not to do thing like if you talk to um, a lot of programmers it's like it's so ugly to do shell scripting and I found it interesting that actually um, people who do not think so and it was like um, uh, a awakening for me um, avoid captive user interfaces kind of relates to the um, the small 
small tool approach. Um, so you can really um, include your programs in, in, a, in, a, um, in a batch workflow and on the command line and you don't have to start duplication um, to do something. Um, because in uh, this way, um, if you have a captive user interface, you have to start at the graphical user interface, programs tend to become like islands. You, um, they are more harder to um, really be combined, uh, combined with another program and therefore yeah, you lines kind of captured in this program. Um, just like 10 leather tenants. And so for me, that's like the extraction of this, um, of these principles that kind of um, interested me most, like um, uh, I just explained. And then we come to a practical application in uh, 2009. Uh, I had a chance to do for the Make Art Festival in Poitiers um, some design work um, uh, beside the general design around the festival. Uh, it included a, a pro processual generative poster um, setup. Um, that's uh, in a way what did happen and how you can see what I really wanted to do is um, okay how many different stuff I can connect and how do I connect it and what will come out of this so um, what we do we have um, like eye based preparation I call it I create modules that um, I will use later on these modules also included in this case um, the preparation of, of small processing um, sketches that will produce just um, an output, in this case PDF. And um, um, this, um, uh, like these modules are stored in a, um, uh, in a certain directory structure, I will come to that later. And when the generator or the engine is started, uh, what it does is um, it selects um, randomly one of these sketches, I think about 40 different, um, different generators. Um, it collects some information and then the um, processing sketch is run. The way interesting is um, I was working on that time or the generator was running on a, on a headless machine. And therefore, processing is actually not meant to be used without um, um, an, uh, a graphical interface, but there's a workaround, this um, X virtual frame buffer, you can tell it processing there is, um, there is a surface and it runs. So yeah, I could, and then it um, exports PDF. Um, I collect all this um, stuff in plain text files and from this collection, I um, generate um, a Latte sock file, um, render PDF, it's PDF Latte and have an output put. Uh, let's have a short view at it's, um, what came out. It's like um, I have set up the system and um, it produces um, a lot of variations of posters. Um, also very practical in this case was that um, I could replace um, just certain parts. Um, we had to do since the festival was in France to do um, different versions, English and, uh, and French. Uh, now I have to search for what's poster in French. It's a fish. That's the, the collections. We had also um, like different Dean formats, um, A3, A2, A1. And by just replacing um, the part of the language, which is like the title and the information, um, I use the same engine and just replace a module. Um, shortly after, there was um, uh, a fork of the Make Art Festival, which was, I think, in somewhere in the Netherlands. I don't remember. It's uh, Change Mod Plus X Art, and there I used a similar engine, but um, basically replaced just some part of the of the process, and um, was therefore able to to reuse a lot lot of the work. And I think that's kind of coming back to this modular approach. I, um, since I tended to write um, small parts and not one monolithic thing, um, I was able to reuse on my own parts of the, of the process. Um, yeah, so it's like um, this was for the, the other festival. 
Um, and here I use also uh, PDF LaTeX as a render engine and um, what I did, I collected information about the, uh, um, the processing programs that were used and they're a kind of um, uh, annotated in um, like a visual map, so you have these programs, and you have for each a reference what um, uh, what uh, program produced this. Um, okay. Um, since we're running already out of time, um, I will go through this because um, more interesting is perhaps for the last LGM in Madrid. Um, we also did some work and. Um, Interesting in this um, uh, uh, in this case is I think that um, we had a really separated part which was also um, um, quite functional from the, the stability because we had a, um, uh, we had a, a a web interface where people could enter um, uh, questions and answers regarding um, free software and graphic design. Uh, so, just shortly, that's where all these projects are collected. Um, really, um, it's, a, it's more or less a mirror of the, the working environment. So, you can browse just through the, uh, the, the directory and see, okay, here is, for example, the shell script that it used, which is quite messy. Um, but that's also a point about this talk. I'm not really, um, um, I think it's so interesting uh, what I do, but what enables me to do. And this is the set of principles. Um, okay, then here it was this, um, uh, this um, uh, interface for questions and answers of um, users or non-users or potential future users of free software. And you could um, either uh, enter a question um, or uh, give an answer. Um, um, it's closed right now because a lot of spam bots are also interested in um, in giving answers and asking questions. Okay, then um, that's the. Uh, we have the local interface, we have the, the input, um, which stores all the, the questions and answers in a simple text file. This text file is um, synchronized to a local machine where all the generation of the um, posters happens, um, which is uh, quite useful because um, actually to, you do not want to have um, something like this running on a, on a web server um, because it's, um, um, could, something could go wrong and you don't want your, your main web server to crash. Um, it synchronizes the file, it generates for every um, new question on those posters, and then it pushes them up per FTP and they're um, available. Because um, that's part of the thing you have um, for the questions. You can see here um, all posters that were generated for for these questions. And you have the big text is the question, and then you have all the answers attached to it, um, connected with some illustrations, which uh, were part of the, the eye-based preparation. And um, uh, yeah, but you most probably have seen this. Um, to make it more simple, I will give very two very simple examples, um, um, just to reduce um, uh, uh, yeah, like what, what I see behind is the ASCII text thing. Um, SED is like um, a command line utility. It's uh, like a search and replace um, functionality really extended. Um, with Inkscape, we have um, uh, XML base as for SVG. And therefore, you can like uh, use the, the functionality of um, which was originally intended to um, uh, as a useful um, thing to edit config files. You can also do, use on your your uh, Inkscape files. For example, just um, replace. In this case, you just replace foo with bar, and you do this actually in a um, in a visual 
11. That's what I find quite interesting that with Inkscape you have a very close connection between text and, um, and, and the source file. You have also the XML editor that you can access and you see, okay, what elements have what IDs and uh, it's very useful because um, we're not just talking in this case about text but um, the same for colors. You can um, replace, um, since it's all stored as um, plain ASCII text, you can um, uh, edit different things. It can be quite, um, quite powerful um, because, yeah, you can only replace in a layer. If there is red, then black should be a blue or anything like this. So you can really um, uh, think up your, your applications. Um, it's uh, SED is kind of uh, complicated. Um, I didn't really get it um, until today. I just um, find examples and adapt them to, to what I need. So um, best resources as a day handy one-liners. There you have a lot of, um, of examples. Um, second is automate everything. This example would be um, um, I used PDF TK, um, PDF toolkit, um, which has a function to use one PDF as the background for another one. And in this case, um, I just wanted to have um, a certain uh, or all PDFs in the directory to um, to be layered one above the other. So I have a really a simple um, simple loop that. Um, uses one PDF as the background of another and then this uh, layer PDF becomes um, the background for the next round of the loop. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, problem was that uh, there was a maximum amount of times you could do this. This was like uh, 20 times. Um, but um, there we come back to another principle that um, like computing time is cheap. You I did just insert another conversion in this loop, like um, flattening the PDF, and all it actually does cost me is like, um, I don't know, um, two seconds in every loop. And since it's automated, um, um, I don't not really care. If you would do this by hand and um, do this um, uh, save as or export, um, it would be not quite uh, useful. So, interesting, or what, what is my kind of, of essence behind this? Um, I'm really uh, keen on like human readable source files and um, accessible render engine. Um, to the comment line, this can be a whole different stuff. It can be um, KDE and live um, source files that you can also edit on the comment line, but generate a video from, or it can be HTML or anything. So. Uh, showstopper is basically a binary file format uh, lacking command line support. For example, I think uh, looked in the Scribos bug tracker, it's recommended since 2004 that people want to have an export option, so this would be really nice. And captive user interfaces, it's mainly a problem for a lot of proprietary uh, software which have like a scripting capability, but you have to start the interface to do the JavaScripting. So that's like, for me, of my opinion, kind of useless. Um, future, yes, um, the same, um, and we close another um, principle of the Unix philosophy, distrust all claims for one true way, so forget what I said. Uh, thanks to the people that made a lot uh, of the projects possible, and time is over. Um.